Go ahead. <clears throat> Corey, hi. How would you rank Cody's catch last night in center field, robbing Tatis of that two-run shot? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, big moment for us. Really great play. Um, I mean, that's got to be the top charts for me. When you have a situation like that with one of the most dynamic players in the game at the plate, a guy that throws the hardest in the game on the hill, and a National League reigning MVP as your teammate, is there a better situation than that to kind of give an example of what this postseason is? No, you know, that's that's about as playoff baseball as it gets right there. Um, the best of the best going at it, and one team's got to come on on top, and fortunately enough, we came out on top on that play. Corey, continuing your success at the plate and in the field, how have you been able to transition that from the regular season into this postseason? It seems like every time we look up, you're on second base. Um, you know, you just try and stay as consistent as possible. Stay in the moment. Um, don't let it get too big. Um, and just try and do whatever you can to kind of move the line. You know, we've talked about that a lot. It's just moving the line, moving the chain, keeping the ball rolling, and um, not giving away ABs. And that's what we're trying to do. You have an opportunity to close this thing down tonight, obviously, with a 2 nothing series lead. The first game, you guys saw nine different pitchers. Last night, Zach Davies, you know, gives you guys um, a, a bit of a fit there early on, but you guys were able to get to him as well as their bullpen. What are you expecting from tonight in game three? Um, you know, you just got to come out and play good baseball. Um, nothing other than that. You know, you can't really worry about anything other than just going out there, executing, and uh, trying to get a win tonight. And finally, for me, Corey, what do you make of the emotions between Manny Machado and, and Bruce Dark Gratterall and also, uh, you know, Mookie Betts telling those guys to get back in their dugout and, and Max Muncy with some words as well. Can you speak to the emotion of game two? Yeah, you know, that's um, that's high level situations, a uh, lot of energy, a lot of excitement. Um, it's emotional. You know, these games are emotional. You got to play with emotions. You got to be up for the challenge. You got to be ready for the task. And we were last night. Thank you, Corey. Good luck. Thank you. Next question is from Dave Vassay. Go ahead. Hey, Corey, those two runs that you scored in the seventh inning proved to be very big. Uh, can you take us through the double steal and just the, uh, the synergy between you and Mookie on that play and also Justin to take the pitch? Yeah, you know, honestly, JT taking the pitch is, is huge. Um, Mookie thought he could have them, and knowing that, you know, you, you get a little bigger lead and you want to – you want to be on the backside to not stay in the double play ball. And um, that's what happens. You know, you steal the base, and now JT's line out turns into a sack fly, and then Muncie getting the big hit right there turns into another run. So those are, those are big moments in the game that completely change it. You know, if that doesn't happen, you never know what happens. You know, you might end up losing the game. But right there is it's a big situation. Mookie took advantage of a, a guy he thought he could steal off of, and it paid off. Is Dino the traffic cop on that, or was it Mookie and you following and Justin just having that baseball awareness? Um, you know, we met over at the side, and Mookie was kind of talking about it. Um, so he, he definitely let JT know that it was possible. But, you know, JT's a gamer. Even if Mookie doesn't tell him that, you know, JT's got the baseball awareness to see him take off, know the situation, and, and not swing at it. Thanks, Corey. Next question is from John Morosi. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Corey. Uh, I wonder if you could uh, speak to the, the difference of philosophy and style among the hitting coaches on, on your club with Brant and Robert and Aaron. How are they different? How are, are they unique in communicating their messages to you? What are the, can you say that again? Sorry, I missed the middle part of that. Sure. Uh, the, just the, the diversity and the approaches among your hitting coaches, how Brant and Robert and Aaron are all different in the ways they communicate messages to you. Yeah, you know, they're, they're a really good trio. Um, you know, everybody's pretty unique and everybody's different at the same time. Um, you know, one word can mean a different thing to 12 different people. So having three options to go to and talking through it and, and just strategizing and having different angles and kind of picking the best one that matches you. And, and they're matching 13 different players on our team. So it's a, it's a huge advantage to have those guys moving forward. Next question is from Jorge Castillo. Go ahead. 
Uh, Corey, before that double last night, it seemed like you had a lot of bad luck on balls that you hit hard um, in these playoffs, other than that home run you hit. Um, was it difficult to, you know, did you think your, your luck would, would just eventually flip? And is it difficult to maintain your approach and when the results aren't going, you know, especially in this setting? Um, you know, not really. You know, the postseason is not about stats. It's not about anything other than winning the game. Um, if you roll over four times to the second baseman with people on second, move the runner, and a sack fly or a base set happens next, I mean, that's that's about as good as it can get. So it's never about the the stats. You know, a walk's just as good as a hit, moving runners. Anything you can do to score runs in a postseason game and help your team win is what you're trying to do. And just, you know, in game – I think it was, yeah, game one, you know, Cody beats out that ball that – doesn't beat it out, but they forces the error by Cronenworth. Yeah. And last night you mentioned Mookie, um, you know, thinking of stealing. Do you think you guys are just applying pressure in maybe ways that hey, maybe you guys did it in the past and in, in ways that are making the other team make mistakes and think about different things? A hundred percent. You know, that's, that's the name of the game right now is putting pressure on people, never, never giving up. You know, I think we went the first five innings without a hit and scored – a run or two, you know, like that's that's huge in postseason games. It, it, it really doesn't matter. It's about applying pressure, belly running hard, you know, that makes that play more difficult and you, you see what happens. You know, it's it's all about applying pressure and moving the line and just scoring any way you can. Thank you. Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead. How much of the uh, dimensions and the way this field plays kind of put puts uh, – even more uh, on trying to change your approach and do those, you know, I guess, little things. Yeah. You know, it's, it's huge. Um, This is a big park, you know, you got to really get it to get it out of here and you can't rely on the home run, you know, the, and the balls down the line, the way they bounce off the net, you know, taking the extra base. Um, Barnes is going first to third on a ball that normally, you know, you might not score, but with the dimension or with the foul play and how it bounces, knowing that, and taking advantage of that is huge, you know, in every aspect. Do you have to kind of remind yourself uh, as a team that home runs aren't going to be as big a part of the offense? Um, you know, in a way and, and in a way, no. Um, it's just kind of like playing on the road, you know. It's it's different than at home, especially during the day at home. You know, you can rely a little bit more on the home run ball. Um, but just knowing your elements, knowing what you need to do. And honestly, just back to what I was saying about playoff baseball, you know, just moving runners, sack flies, walks, just applying pressure. Any way you can to score runs is huge. And you uh, being such a wildly emotional and demonstrative person on the field, uh, are you okay with Machado chucking his bat towards the dugout and, and Gratterall heaving his glove and those kind of things? Um, you know, that – like I said, you know, that's that's not my style to show emotion like that. Um, but you know, I completely get it, especially in games like this. You know, it's it's a it's a rivalry, it's it's high emotions. It was a big, big situation, big level, big leveled situation games and you know, emotions take over and honestly watching Grout all do that all year uh has been awesome. You know, he's been a he's been a huge spark for this team. He's been a huge piece in our pen and we always got his back and we love to see his emotion. We got time for one more. Go ahead, Dylan. Hey, Corey, um, you know, it seems like Mookie Betts just kind of finds a way to just kind of deliver almost like on call. And, you know, I know part of that is just he has a very kind of well-rounded skill set that allows him to kind of beat teams multiple ways. But what have you learned maybe about kind of his mindset and his approach that that allows him to kind of deliver almost like on a nightly basis? You know, it's it's funny. Um, he's obviously an extremely good player, and that's what makes him good and and, and stuff like that. But he, he fits into this team very well and never giving up, taking each pitch at a time, playing everything out, moving the line. Like that's everything he does and that's what makes him good and just being flat out good. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a huge thing for us, you know, watching a guy as talented as he is and being able to do all these different things, play like we do, you know, play hard, grind everything out and just go about your business. You know, the best player in the world doing that, being on your team and how you play is, is just, it's great to watch. It's good for everybody. And just one more, um, you know, in Kershaw, you know, Turner, uh, Jansen, you know, you have a few guys here who are kind of approaching the, right, the later stage, right? They're in the latter stages of their career, near the end of their contracts. Uh, how much do you guys want to just kind of get it done for those guys too? 
you know, this is, this is one of those moments that everybody wants to succeed. Um, they've had a lot of opportunities in their career to succeed and they have succeeded in a lot of opportunities. Um, it's one of those things that this, this team hasn't won in a really long time and people want to win. Um, this team's always thrived to win a end goal every year is to win and to be able to give those guys at the end of their career a win is, it would be awesome. You know, it, it would be that much more gratifying. Thank you.